Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, my topic is diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, a fatal triangle. I will start with uh, this uh, slide from, uh, from Lancet. It is a paper published last year, last year and it's talking about, uh, about uh, causes of, of mortality, uh, world data. If you are looking at, 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 uh, at this uh, slide, you will see that uh, there are many causes from communicable uh, to non-communicable diseases and uh, injuries. But if you are looking uh, more precisely into this slide, we will see that uh, uh, those uh, causes of mortality which are here on the, on the right side are those uh, which have higher, higher incidence. Also on this slide, we are comparing situation in 2006. They, they compare situation in 2006, 2000 to, uh, to uh, situation in 2016. And uh, if we are looking at uh, two more, still two more frequent causes of mortality, these are uh, two on the most right uh, side of the slide, uh, ischemic heart disease and the stroke. So uh, still cardiovascular diseases are on the top. Uh, also among uh, more frequent uh, causes uh, of, of death are other cardiovascular diseases and uh, uh, cardiomyopathies. Diabetes is also some, some, somewhere here. There is, a, there is no, uh, no big difference uh, uh, according, according to frequency in 2006 and 2016, and uh, it is, it is uh, one of the most uh, frequent uh, uh, indirect cause of death. If we are looking at uh, many obesity-related diseases, uh, we have to, to, to mention that uh, many, uh, many cancers are, are uh, connected uh, with, uh, with obesity, uh, especially in the field of gastroenterology. I'm pers personally, I'm gastroenterologist, and if you are looking at some, uh, some cancers like pancreas cancer, colorectal cancer, and esophageal cancer, are uh, connected. Are are con are connected. Uh, uh, are connected. Uh, are, are are connected with obesity. So uh, the idea is to to talk about uh, fatal triangle: obesity, cardiovascular diseases, and uh, diabetes. Uh, if we are looking at obesity, obesity is a common. Uh, common uh, risk factor for uh, both, for cardiovascular diseases and for diabetes. Diabetes is connected with uh, many, uh, with uh, multiple complications, and if you're looking at the cardiovascular diseases, finally, uh, cardiovascular diseases are a leading uh, cause of death, uh, if we are talking about this fatal uh, triangle. Let's start uh, with uh, obesity. There are many effects of obesity on health. If we are uh, looking at obese people, nobody who is obese will uh, live 100 years. So we have really lower life expectancy in obese people. We have many, many studies have shown also that people who are obese have fewer employment opportunities. They have lower self-esteem. Because of this, they are more depressed than normal population. They have limited mobility. And finally, they have social discrimination. But also, it is connected with many diseases. They have more arthritis, more uh, deep vein thrombosis, more bone uh, problems. They have increased sweating. sweating they have more hernias, but also they have more diseases, diseases that are topic of, uh, our, uh, of my talk, like type 2 diabetes, like high blood pressure, like breath, breathing problems, like heart attacks, like joint problems, and finally, like cancers.
This is a, an old study coming from uh, uh, 99, and it's talking about uh, epidemiology and the uh, relation of body mass index and uh, mortality in prospective cohort of uh, uh, US adults. If we are looking at this uh, slide and the connection of uh, uh, body mass index and, uh, and the cardiovascular diseases, and especially if you are looking at the relative risk of death, you will see that uh, uh, there is here presented uh, a sort of, uh, of J curve, and that uh, uh, people with a BMI of uh, from, from 20 up to 26, 27, have, uh, have low uh, or normal relative risk for, 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 for that. And if uh, we are uh, going up from 27 to 40 or over 40, uh, risk for, for, for that is uh, extremely, extremely high. Uh, if we are looking at, uh, at, at the causes, uh, uh, this uh, JF cur curve you can you can see also uh, if you are looking specifically on uh, cardiovascular diseases. This curve, and uh, you can see that the similar things are happening uh, with the patients uh, uh, with cancers and all other causes. So uh, there are uh, multiple pathophysiological and metabolical changes related to obesity. Insulin resistance, diabetes, uh, type 2, dyslipidemias, systolic and diastolic arterial hypertension, left ventricular hypertrophy, sympathetic uh, nervous uh, system dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction, obstructive sleep apnea. So, uh, Insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia have uh, three, uh, three times greater risk of cardiovascular, three times uh, uh, higher uh, cardiovascular risk. But uh, also obesity is a cause of, uh, indirect uh, cause of arterial hypertension. If we are looking at uh, two big studies, one is Swedish uh, uh, obesity study and one is nurse's health study, you can see that uh, uh, more than 50% of obese subjects had arterial hypertension, and also that uh, uh, that uh, body mass index uh, at uh, 18 years of age positively correlates with uh, arterial hypertension. And if you're looking also at the weight gain, uh, you can you can see that uh, that uh, uh, weight gain uh, of uh, five to ten kilos. Uh, uh, or uh, weight gain from uh, for uh, uh, more than 25 kilos uh, has a, a much higher risk. So uh, this one of 10 kilos, 1.7, and this from more than 25 kilos, 5.2. Many studies also connected uh, uh, connected with with obesity. There, we're, we're looking at uh, at uh, cardiovascular risk, like. Uh, PROCAM study uh, that has shown positive correlation between BMI and uh, cardiovascular uh, mortality that can be presented by the, pre can be explained by the presence of risk factors. But also three uh, most uh, famous studies, less, like a Framingham a Heart Study from, uh, from uh, 85 or Nurses Health Study from 95 and the newest one, uh, Uppsala Senior Study from uh, uh, 2011, uh, have, have shown uh, on a very big numbers uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, there is a strong correlation between uh, BMI and cardiovascular uh, mortality. If we're talking about ischemic heart disease, uh, BMI increase, increase of uh, five uh, per uh, per kilo uh, kilos uh, per, per square meter. Uh, with this uh, BMI increase, uh, patients have almost 30% higher risk of ischemic heart disease. What about the chronic uh, heart failure? 
Chronic heart failure is uh, the only cardiovascular disease with, with, uh, with still increasing uh, incidence, prevalence, and mortality, uh, mortality uh, rate, and uh, also uh, even a very small increase in BM, BMI uh, uh, is uh, presented by, uh, by a high, uh, high uh, risk increase of uh, chronic heart uh, failure. For, even for males and uh, females, and uh, uh, we can see that 11% uh, of uh, uh, chronic heart failure in males and 14 in females uh, are direct consequences of, uh, of obesity. Uh, Hippocrat uh, uh, mentioned uh, that uh, sudden death is more common in those who are uh, naturally fat than those uh, who are lean. And uh, this is uh, also uh, confirmed uh, in uh, recent studies, and uh, uh, I think that everybody is familiar with this, that, uh, that the sudden the risk of sudden death is, uh, is uh, much uh, higher in, in those who are obese. Uh, framing and studies has uh, shown that risk of uh, sudden, sudden death is increased 40, 40 times in this group of uh, people. And uh, similar data are confirmed in, uh, other, in, in, in other, other studies. Uh, so at the moment in the world we have really, uh, really a, a crisis, uh, obesity crisis, and uh, and uh, we are very near near uh, to one billion of obese of obese uh, people in the world. And uh, at the moment uh, we have almost 2.5 uh, billion of overweight overweight uh, population in the world. So uh, obesity is a combination of factors at uh, multiple <coughs> levels. Uh, uh, nowadays we have changes in the global food supply. We have uh, uh, really more processed, uh, affordable, and uh, nutrition dense food. And uh, because of, uh, uh, of this and uh, many social, cultural, environmental, and economic uh, fac factors, uh, uh, People are, are changing their uh, eating behavior and especially their uh, physical activity. So, if we are uh, talking about fatal triangle, a second element in the fatal triangle is uh, diabetes. And uh, diabetes <coughs> is a really global, pro global problem and uh, a number of, uh, of people uh, who have diabetes is, is, is growing up and it will, it will uh, grow up uh, also in, 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 in a further uh, years. If we are looking situation in, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, Europe and in uh, Northern America, uh, percentually it will be maybe, maybe a lower uh, growing up than, uh, than in, in, in the countries uh, like uh, at the moment are those in, in, in Northern Africa, in Africa, uh, where at the moment rates are lower, but, uh, uh, but they are, uh, uh, they, they are uh, growing up and the expectations that are that they will, they will uh, grow up uh, in, 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 in the next uh, years. Every second, uh, every six seconds, the person uh, dies from the complications of diabetes, and because of this, uh, uh, diabetes is a really chronic disease with uh, potentially deadly consequences. So uh, we have, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, macrovascular complications I, uh, I have spoken about, like cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases, but, but also with diabetes, as you know, uh, uh, diabetes is connected with peripheral arterial diseases and also with a lot of microvascular complications like diabetic retinopathy, nephropathy, and uh, neuropathy. So uh, nowadays we are uh, we are we are talking uh, about uh, about phenomenon.
called the diabetes, a combination of diabetes and obesity, so two parallel epidemics uh, that are uh, growing up, uh, up uh, t together and uh, data are, are showing that the incidence of newly uh, discovered diabetes is uh, much, diabetics is much higher in those who have a higher, a higher uh, BMI, so risk in, in those is, uh, is, is, uh, 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 is big and uh, is, uh, is over, over 60 per, per uh, 1,000. Also, uh, one of the uh, risk uh, factors is the waist circumference, and uh, if you are comparing uh, waist circumference and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the diabetes mellitus incidence, uh, uh, you can see that uh, it is uh, growing uh, up with, uh, with a higher uh, uh, waist uh, uh, circumference. Also, there are two types of, of obesity, subcutaneous and visceral. Uh, uh, if you are looking at, uh, at, at the situation in, in the people who are obese, they of course have, uh, have uh, uh, mostly a lack of uh, physical activity and exercises, uh, and uh, they are taking uh, uh, more uh, than necessary energy uh, dense food, uh, so fats and the sugar, and uh, uh, they, uh, there is a difference bet uh, between those who have, uh, who have uh, some uh, additional risk uh, factors uh, like uh, smoking, uh, those who have unfavorable uh, genotype and uh, maladaptive responses to stress. So uh, these people are uh, developing uh, visceral uh, obesity with uh, dysfunctional adipose uh, tissue. Uh, they have altered uh, uh, free fatty acid metabolism, they have altered release of adipokines, and they have a, a lipid overflow with uh, ectopic uh, fat in the muscles, epicardial fat, uh, and uh, also, also liver fat. Uh, uh, in contrast to, to people uh, with the subcutaneous obesity, uh, uh, they uh, that uh, do not have uh, ectopic uh, fat. So uh, uh, finally, uh, these people with visceral of obesity have ultra metabolic uh, profile, and, and uh, these people have a, a very very high the high uh, cardiovascular uh, risk. If we add to this uh, fatal triangle uh, dyslipidemia. Uh, we can uh, talk about people with uh, metabolic, uh, metabolic uh, syndrome, and uh, as you know, uh, metabolic syndrome is, uh, uh, is a presence of uh, uh, is a presence of multiple metabolic risk factors for uh, cardiovascular diseases and and uh, and uh, and the diabetes. And uh, if you are looking at people with a metabolic uh, syndrome, they have uh, uh, they have uh, uh, higher risk for developing uh, cardiovascular diseases in the next five to ten years, and also uh, they have uh, five, uh, five times uh, higher risk of uh, developing uh, type 2 diabetes uh, in uh, five to, to ten years. So uh, pathogenic denominators of these are allergenic dyslipidemia, arterial hypertension, and hyperglycemia. And uh, if you are looking at definition according to uh, some consensus, uh, we can see that, uh, that we have a cut of values uh, for, for uh, waist circumferences that is, uh, differs uh, from, from, from um, region to region, and that we have also some, uh, uh, some uh, cut of value for uh, triglycerides, HDL, elevated uh, arterial pressure, and fasting glucose. But if you are looking at, uh, at a cohort, uh, uh, cohort studies like, uh, like uh, this one, uh, published in Diabetes Care, we can see that, uh, that uh, METS is, uh, is, 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 uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, connected with, uh, with the weight. So uh, proportion of METS in, uh, in the people who have normal weight is, uh, uh, is uh, about 5%, in overweight is about 20%, in obese is, uh, is more than 60%. Uh, also, of course, that rate in patients with metabolic syndrome is, uh, is the highest in, in, in those uh, who are obese and who have a metabolic, uh, metabolic uh, uh, syndrome. 
Uh, finally, I will uh, like to tell a few words about the connection of mats and, and, and cancer. Those uh, who, have, uh, who have chronic uh, positive energy, uh, energy balance uh, caused by uh, lower physical activity and the higher energy intake uh, uh, have obesity and metabolic syndrome. Uh, uh, with this are connecting, the, connecting uh, changes in the levels of uh, insulin, leptins, many cytokines, and uh, all this is connected with, uh, with uh, elevation of uh, growth uh, sig factor signaling, uh, uh, vascular uh, perturbations and inflammations, and all this by uh, very complicated uh, mechanisms is connected with cancer risk uh, and uh, uh, and, and, and progression. So if you are looking at the cancer risk in people with a metabolic syndrome, we will see that uh, in man and uh, in a woman, this is a slide uh, about men, that uh, almost uh, all cancers are connected with a uh, higher uh, relative, uh, relative uh, risk for, for uh, um, in, in, in those who have metabolic uh, syndrome. Only two cancers, lung and gastric cancer, are uh, in, in these two cancers, there is no uh, such a correlation. A similar situation is in, uh, in a female, also in a gastric and, uh, and lung cancer, there is, uh, there is no, uh, uh, no uh, higher relative, relative risk, uh, but with uh, most of uh, uh, other, other uh, cancer there is, uh, especially in a female's uh, cancer of endometrium and uh, breast cancer. So what can we do? How can we, uh, we, 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 s we stop uh, this uh, uh, fatal triangle and uh, can we do uh, something? Uh, I think that uh, answers are, uh, are <coughs> relatively, uh, uh, relatively uh, simple, uh, simple uh, but uh, very difficult. So if we are talking uh, about uh, answers, they are uh, diet and they are mostly diet and uh, exercise. But also there, uh, there are some uh, moments uh, in, a, in a management that are not directly connected with, uh, w w with that. So uh, if we are talking about, uh, about uh, food, uh, we have to reduce energy uh, intake. If we are talking about physical activity, uh, we have to increase uh, physical uh, activity. We, uh, we need to have a, a daily physical activity in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in people. Uh, we have to, uh, we have a possibility uh, to, uh, to have uh, behavioral interventions, uh, uh, prevention and treatment of uh, comorbidities, but also pharmacotherapy. Pharmacotherapy uh, uh, is mostly for those who have a BMI over, over, uh, over 30 or uh, alternatively for those who have a BMI uh, over 27 with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the risk uh, factors, but uh, of course also with adjustment uh, of, of diet of, uh, of, uh, and uh, lifestyle uh, modification. And finally, we have uh, many methods, uh, endoscopic uh, uh, interventions, bariatric surgery for, for those who have BMI uh, more than 35 or uh, more than uh, uh, 40. So uh, these are solutions uh, for, 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 for the patients. Uh, and finally, uh, the question is uh, what, what uh, where we are going, and uh, if we are looking at uh, this situation, mo uh, mostly for millions of years, uh, an average uh, BM BMI of human was in, uh, in, in, in a normal range. But in, in the last uh, 50 years, we, can, we have changed it a lot. Uh, these are, I think, very, very interesting data that in uh, uh, 1960, only 1% of males and only 2% on females were obese. 50 years later, 25% uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, today maybe 30% maybe of people in some countries and even more are, are obese. According to this data, the future will be maybe in 2050 uh, over 50% of, of obese people, and this is a, a pessimistic view. We have also an optimistic view that uh, with uh, 
gene modifications, with uh, preventive medications, with uh, uh, really serious uh, food reduction, that we have a possibility to uh, stop uh, to stop this. But uh, I think that uh, uh, there is also a realistic uh, realistic uh, uh, answer, and that it is uh, uh, it is uh, in the numbers we have uh, today that we have to stop obesity at, at this rate and that we will be happy if in uh, 2050 we will be still on the position when we are today according to, according to obesity. Thank you for your attention.